This is Tyler Perry Studios in Atlanta, where an empty studio lot is being transformed to host the fifth Democratic debate of the 2020 election. It takes hundreds of people to pull this off. Crews build the stage, bring in seats for a live audience, set up lights, audio, cameras. But hosting a presidential debate isn't just about the stage and the setting. It's about getting the candidates to answer questions, reveal who they are and what they would do as president. And to get those answers, you need moderators, and they do a lot of homework. I'm Libby Casey. Come with me behind the scenes to see what it takes to moderate a presidential debate. The role of the moderator really is to get the candidate beyond their talking points to get them beyond what a voter would have heard them say over and over and over again on a campaign trail, because that is what the candidate does not want you to do. It's, there is the, the tension between the moderator and the candidate. That's it right there. Karen Tumulty has moderated a debate or forum in four of the last five presidential cycles. Well, when you think back to debates, the moments that really stand out in your memory are, number one, the disastrous gaffe. I can't. The third one, I can't. Sorry. <laughs> Oops. But number two, they really are those moments where the candidates engage with each other in, in a kind of meaningful way. I got votes for that bill. I convinced people to vote for it. So let's get those things straight, too. No, you didn't say what the moderator did, right? We don't, we don't all look back and think, remember that time the moderator did X, Y, and Z? Is that, is that know, a sign of success? If you come away from a debate thinking about the moderator, that moderator has not done a good job. When you get the call or the email or the tap on the shoulder that right. you're going to be part of one of these debates, what's the first thought that goes through your mind? It's, um, it takes about a second. You go from, oh, cool, to, oh, my God. You know. So you find out that you're, you're going to be involved in this process and you think about, okay, do I have enough time? How, how am I going to prepare for this? Because, you know, someone might think, well, what do you mean do you have enough time? If you have, like, a, even a, a week, like, <sighs> all you have to do is write questions, right? No, it's, in fact, the questions themselves. We had, in both of the debates I've done since I was at The Post, they were sponsored with another news organization, and we spent many, many hours around a table, probably 20, 25 people around a table, just working on the questions. How do you phrase this? What's the point you're trying to, to get to? What are the likely answers going to be? How do you make sure that in the way you frame the question, you're not giving a candidate an off-ramp to go answer something else? The first thing you wanna do is learn everything you can about every issue that you think is likely to come up. But it is just as important to know everything that every candidate has said about that issue so that you can get them past their talking points. Expect what they are going to want to say. Often, you can do that by the way you frame the question. You can say, you know, candidate A, we all know that, you know, you think climate change is a big problem. We all know that you talk about it all the time, but how would you deal with it in such and such a way? So you can go ahead and get the, the talking points off the table and move on. The other thing that is, that is I think, really important is to keep your questions as short as possible. Okay, this is 2016, Democratic debate between Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders. Secretary Clinton, you've known Donald Trump a long time. You've seen what kind of campaign he's running. Secretary Clinton, is Donald Trump a racist? You know, Karen, I'm gonna follow my friend Senator Sanders model here. Um, if I'm so fortunate enough to be the Democratic nominee, there will be a lot of time to talk about him. Um, I was the first one to call him out. So and people so can draw their own conclusions about him. But I will, I will just end by saying this. You don't make America great by getting rid of everything that made America great. And Secretary Clinton, my question is about his character. And that is one of the primary things that Americans think about when they choose their next president. Does she ever answer your question? She, she did not. I suspect that if Hillary Clinton had that moment back, I think she might 
have uh, given me a straighter answer on that one. Yeah. One thing I noticed about this, Karen, is you first point out that they've known each other for a long time, and Hillary Clinton sort of laughs, and and you don't break character. I mean, you don't you don't get like sucked into like the oh this is like a fun light moment. Right. Like, you are just still right there, and then you pull the attention back, like you pull the audience and Hillary Clinton back to the moment, and then you go ahead and ask the rest of your question. Yeah, you know, I could have phrased that question sort of more of in a fuzzy way, you know. I could have phrased it, what does it say about a person? Do you think he's playing on racial fears? Do you, you know, there you were, were really direct, yeah. Because I just thought you'd get a more interesting answer. And the fact that I couldn't get an answer was interesting in itself. One of the trickiest parts of moderating a debate is interrupting the candidates and holding them to time without coming across as abrasive. TV networks have tried to help the moderators by putting lights on the podiums to signal candidates to stop talking, a signal they often ignore. Thank you, Congressman. This is an Thank you, Congressman. We're going to move on. We're going to move on to the issue of immigration now. First, you say, "Thank you, Senator," and then you say. We've got to move on, Senator. And you just get firmer and firmer. And then finally you say, time, <laughs> we're moving. Presidential debates have a way of grabbing the news cycle and focusing on the race to the White House. But even an event this big can't ignore the day's headlines. Of course, then the, the big wild card is the potential that you're, you walk into the day of the debate so prepared with all your questions, and then some major news event happens that day. And you've got to figure out, you know, how do, what are we going to ask about this big event? What are we going to throw out and not be able to ask about because of this? So after the debate, there's a big tally of like winners or losers of the candidates. Are you doing your own mental tally of like things you feel like you did well, regrets that you had? Are you playing the night over in your mind over oh, and over again? a hundred times. I mean, it was just like, oh, that, I didn't word that right or I stumbled over that. Do you go back and watch? I probably did once, yeah. And then my, my children were just delighted that there was some moment that got turned into a gif out of that, of me. My Maybe kid, it'll be a TikTok right. this time, yeah, right. My kids, yeah. you know, had seen that look. Yeah, it was like, move on. 